I'm making a browser first open source beat em up game about zombies and there's already a problem. Oof. I know this looks like a Wiimote but it's actually a time machine so that was close. Alright I'm gonna put this back but back to the problem. This sprite atlas is 3.6 megabytes for three animations and it is the tip of an unmanageable mathematical iceberg. Each character in this game will have 10 to 20 animations. With one to four players and three to five zombie types per level, players will have to download hundreds of megabytes just to play the open source zombie game. And nobody is gonna wait that long. Then there's loading these PNGs into memory, which may take somewhere around 16 megabytes per 2K texture. What we're dealing with here may melt some computers. The good news is no one is going to have this memory problem because they won't stay past the loading screen. So this game is DOA if we don't change course. We can make some compromises like targeting a lower resolution so that everything is just smaller or we can play the animations at 30 FPS or even 15 FPS instead of 60 for a 2x or 4x savings. But there's got to be a better way that doesn't nerf the game. The web is capable of high fidelity games and OSZG can be an example of that. This problem is not unique to web games, so let's see what we can find in the GDC archives. I split the character into many tiny pieces that I can later import in Adobe Flash, and then I have to decide how I implement the graphics in the game. The most, most common uh, method is sprite sheets. I don't use this because it's quite a big image, it takes a lot of resources, and especially if you have a game with really high resolution assets and a lot of animations, it can basically make your computer catch on fire. What I am using is something I call asset sheets, but instead of exporting it each frame of the animation, I export each uh, part of my character and then export the animation separately using a custom exporter as a text file. So this is how a frame looks like. As a comparison, this is how the sprite sheet would look for those four or five animations I showed before. And this would be 5700 by 3100 pixels, which is quite a lot. Uh, in comparison, this is the asset sheet, which is 460 by 210, which is less than 1% of the number of pixels. The flash method of making animation sounds like the perfect solution to this problem. There's just one tiny problem. Flash is dead. Okay, let's think. What are some mobile games with high fidelity back when cellular downloads were limited to 50 to 100 megabytes? Hmm, Rayman. That's a game with high resolution art and butter smooth animations. It came out on the Xbox as well, so let's see. Wait, 55? Okay, what secrets are the French hiding? So uh, as you can see the animation is a mix of classic animation and bones animation. So I can make any part uh, but to do this, we need to separate all the part bodies of the characters. So uh, as you can see, uh, for each part, so we added uh, the bones, and I create an uh, area, <coughs> and this area will be uh, will generate a, a mesh. But for Rayman, we have really more animation. This is uh, the full list of animation. This is what we need bone animations. Phaser 3 has first class support for Spine, which is a tool for creating skeletal animations and is used in many published games. But there is one problem. I'm already paying $260 for these sprite sheet animations, but maybe I can ask the artist to redo them. They'll get to do more of what they love, so they'll probably thank me. Dear Animator, Great job on the animations. I do have one minor revision before final payment. I'm going to need you to redo them all as skeletal animations in Spine. Looking forward to seeing them. Kind regards, Super Tommy. Dear Super Tommy, no. This is out of scope, pay, or I'll report you. Good day. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this because it can be dangerous, but I guess I'll just have to use my time machine. I've used this before, but it was just going back a few minutes, which is low risk. This time will be quite a bit longer, so we'll see what happens. See you in the other timeline.
Alright, these animations look good and they are massively smaller than they were before. Mission accomplished. The other benefit to skeletal animations is that when you want to slow down time, they will stay butter smooth, unlike frame-based animations. Hmm, what's this? Will Flash CS9 run on Switch 2? Flash CS9? Crystal Dynamics announces a new Tomb Raider game powered by Adobe Flash? Adobe Games releases Flash CS9 for next generation games? Oh f what timeline am I in? While I try to find my way out of the multiverse, check out this video over here to see how you can speed up your code by 4x using an ECS architecture that's used by some of the largest game development teams in the world. And, if you can believe it, one of the earliest ECS open source projects I could find, called Ash, was written for Flash.